There's 35. What do you want, Endure? Yeah, okay. For now, maybe I'll make a swap if I don't need it. Good go. There. Wait, no, no, don't, don't do too many attacks because then we're screwed. I wonder if Baize will kill. You know what? No, do do this. I have extra turns. If we don't kill, I'll just have Hanuman use another turn. Okay, you killed, it's fine. Oh you endured it! Stop enduring it! It makes sense. I know I got endure. Alright, now Yuzu just gets the hit here. Get that skill crack. The only reason my playtime was so high is getting lost. That's understandable. Hopefully, uh, I mean, this is great, but 85 hours? Like, that's insane. I want Joshua to get this kill. My Vesperia playthrough lasted 85 hours. That's the only Tales game that got to 85 hours in my channel. But Tales of Vesperia has a lot of side quests. And I, I don't even think I did everything. I did like 95% of Vesperia. Good stuff. No XP, but we got Maka. Now, were there any demons that I wanted at 35? I wonder. Ooh, Harati. Wasn't your name Parvati? Or Parvati's a different one, I guess. There's Legion, of course. Kukulan, nice. We've got Ziodine. I really want Kukulan. I think you pronounce this a certain way, but hear me out. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how you pronounce it. I will be pronouncing it my way. Or a boss, you're 35. I don't think I really want you, though. Orthros would be nice, though. Might do another Tales game since you're past me a good bit. Probably won't catch up before I finish the main segment of Sunbreak. I'd recommend Tales of Zillia, probably. I think Tales of Zillia would be a good first Tales game for you to finish, Wildcat. Man, I love Zillia so much. I really... I want to replay it. I want to. I probably want to do Jude's side on the channel at some point. I can't afford to do that anytime soon, but I would probably. After Zillia 2, I'd expect to see Jude's side because I love that game so much. It's good. Fourth favorite Tales game for a good reason. I don't want to fuse to get Orthros. I only have one Hanuman. Four stance is worthless, actually. don't want to use Hanuman. I could get another Ishtar. These all involve Hanuman. Of course they do. Or... How much Maka do I have? I'm gonna register my demons while I'm at it. I've got 9,000 Maka. A lot, but buying demons from the compendium takes a lot. I can just buy you from the auction? Yeah, do that instead. I'll take you for 4,000. Not bad. Pay my bid. 
I can also get Legion, of course I could. You get another Hanuman. I might do that and then fuse. I can't. Okay. Yeah, I'd also... Another thing about Tails games, the reason why I said Zillia over Graces, you're probably like, oh, no, but your favorite's Graces. I would recommend Graces, but you started Zillia already, so I'd rather you continue one that you started. Plus, I like Graces, but I think Zillia's combat is a lot more... I think Zillia's combat's a lot more first Tales game friendly, like getting into the series. I feel like Grace's combat is fun, but it really, um, it's not as standard as some of the others. I feel like Zillia is like a really good jumping point. One of the best, honestly. It sucks that it's only on the PS3, though, because that kind of ruins how accessible it is. Or how accessible it could be. The platform is the only thing that makes it, like, not as accessible. I know what you meant. I was just, I was adding on to my sentence of being like, anyone who was like, oh, you should recommend your favorite. Like, I know my favorite's Grace's, but I personally recommended Zillia first because you had started it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know you have your whole Bazanga history. I say this uh, a lot. When I ever, whenever I say Bazangas, if anyone on YouTube doesn't know what Bazangas are, just look up Tales of Zillia, Bazanga skit. You're in for a good time. I think I was talking about that skit in Ease 8 and someone was so confused. Like, I've never played Tales of Zillia. What is this term? Yeah, unfortunately, Keisuke, you're going to be on the bench. I really like my team set up, so I don't want to use anyone else. Also, who am I going to add Orthrus on? It's got Animal Leg, which is really good. Oh, this is so hard. Who do I take? Am I going to put it on Midori? I know you can switch demons like whenever you want, but it's always hard to decide a team comp. There's so many good demons. Uh, let's do one of these events, I guess. About the comp, 10 bit left with me. Yeah, that's the one. I was thinking it's about time we checked out what's in it. Yeah, go for it, dude. All right, let's get cracking. But won't it lock up if we get the password wrong? It seems that way. We only get one shot at this, so I want everyone's input. It's a four-digit code, but what would he use as a password? I don't know. His birthday? His address? Maybe his phone number or his blood type? Probably the blood type, because no one would ever think about blood type as a password. Dude, I wouldn't use stuff that weak for my ATM pin. He'd go with something trickier. Oh, Yuzu. Yeah, what about his name? Yeah, dude, totally. His, his first name. Insurance number? You think it's his company ID number? Uh, okay, but how would we find out what that is? In my defense, all the options kind of sucked. That might be obscure enough. If someone got his comp, they couldn't crack that. Then again, neither can we. 
Oh, I have to say all of these? Yeah. He wouldn't forget his full name, and it would be hard to find out. In fact, even I only know his last name. Oh, right, because Japan... Japan's, like, all about using last names for stuff, right? If this was America, this would backfire. His handle? You mean 10-bit? Well, I don't know. But if he left me this, he must think I could crack the password. His handle is one thing I do know about him, so maybe that is it somehow. Might as well give it a try. Ten's already a number, but what's bit? A bit is the smallest unit of data storage. It has two states, on, one, or off, zero. Hmm, huh. so ten bits would mean 20 states total? Whoa there, you who It's not simple multiplication. It's actually exponentiation. 10 bits isn't 2 times 10. It's 2 to the 10th power. Well, I know my stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's 2 to the 10th power? Uh, do I... Isn't that 1024? I think it's 1024. Wh what? You're right. It's 1024. Don't tell me you worked that out in your head. Are you a secret math whiz? Ah, oh, you got me. Wait, 1024? That's four digits. Then is that the answer? <laughs> wow, good call on the handle thing. Come on, give me at least some of the credit. Sure, sure, whatever. Hurry up and try the password. Jeez, you can be cruel. All right, here goes. One, zero, two, three. No, it was one, zero, two, four. Atsuru, uh, that's not it. You put in 1023. It's supposed to be 1024. Calm down. In programming, numbers are counted starting from zero. So the largest value 10 bits can contain is 1023. Ha <laughs> ha! Bingo! Oh. Huh. Jeez. How is any normal person supposed to know that? I'm with you there. They wouldn't. That's why it's a good password, right? All right. I'm going to read through this. Give me some time. Okay. Good luck. What the hell? What's up, Atsuro? Did you find out something? Y yeah. Do you guys know about the PSE law? PSE law? It was passed to make sure electronic devices are safe, but it has a lot of problems. Any electronic device that hasn't passed a special body's inspection can't be sold. A friend of mine got so mad because he couldn't buy an old used TV for cheap anymore. Well, the law wasn't explained very well to businesses or the relevant regulatory agencies. They only announced their policies right before the enforcement began. Some secondhand dealers were even forced into bankruptcy because of it. Yeah. The retailers raised a stink in the media as soon as the policies were announced. It passed in 2001, but they allowed a grace period until 2006 because of the outcry. Oh, I think I remember that. I'm not much for gadgets, so I didn't know the details. Figures. That's how the government made people get used to it over time. But Tenbit and his journalist friend thought something was fishy, and they were right. That law had an undisclosed purpose. What? But aren't we talking about home appliances like microwaves and fridges? Aren't we are. <laughs> That's like the first typo I've noticed. Yeah, that's the whole trick behind it. Take an ordinary microwave like we have. You have one at your place, right, Yuzu? You ever open it up and look inside? Huh? Of course not. I mean, it's a microwave. That's what most people think. It's what let the government get away with this. No one noticed the extra chip installed inside every PSE certified product. Yeah, it says here that's why the journalist disappeared. When Tenbit took over his work, he eventually figured out what the chip was for. When it gets a certain signal, the chip controls the output of the device's power source. For what, though? Tenbit wondered the same thing, and he discovered an astonishing fact. The real, classified intent of the PSE law was the UEM field. UEM what? What does UEM stand for? Ultra Electromagnetic. It's a super weapon that uses EM waves. Look, 
Every electronic device emits EM waves, every one, but they're very weak, so ordinarily the waves don't pose any problem. However, a powerful EM wave moves molecules, which creates heat just like a microwave. Ever hear that joke about the cat in the microwave? Living things would boil to death. Ugh, that's an awful example. But is it easy to make EM waves that strong? Right, it's not impossible. It's like how we learned in physics that two overlapping waves can make a bigger one. I haven't taken physics since high school. The EM waves that ordinary household electronics emit are weak. But Japan is flooded with electronics nowadays. What if all those electronics had a chip that emitted EM waves on command? If someone activated them all at once, what would happen? W wait a second. You're saying someone, but the government passed this law, right? Why would they do something that dangerous? What would they do with a chip like that? Oh, sorry. You're right. Uh, okay, enough. Shouldn't we be thinking more about how to stay alive? Come on, you two. Let's go. The game is called Devil Survivor, so we're trying to survive, yeah. Hey, all that stuff. Does it really have nothing to do with us? Yeah, I think so too. The lockdown and blackout. I hope they have nothing to do with this UEM field. Alright. On to another Otsuro thing. Zuna and Fushima. The lockdown's still not getting lifted. I'm starting to hate how the SDF troops are always glaring at us. <sighs> Atsuro? What are you all quiet about? Hey, what if... What if what? What if they weren't locking us in? What if they were really protecting us? Huh? What are you talking about? Like in the movies, the good guys are really the enemy and the other way around. What? That's retarded. Come on, play along. What's so bad about using your imagination? Imagination, huh? Like, for example, what if the world outside was actually destroyed five days ago? What? They could be protecting us because it's dangerous now to leave the lockdown. Stop it! I don't care if you're thinking out loud. That's not funny. Our homes are out there. Don't even joke about them being gone already. Crap. I went too far. Way to go, Atsuro. Yeah, I'll do that. I really screwed up. I knew how bad Yuzu wants to go home, and I still said that stuff. For Yuzu's sake, don't ever be stupid like me, all right? I'm going to go apologize. It's oh, words. It's later, Atsuro returns with Yuzu. I'm really, really sorry. I, I screwed up. I'll try not to talk without thinking. No, it's okay. I'm sorry, too. I just... When I imagined it, I got really scared. Um, okay. Let's pull ourselves together and get going. I'm glad it worked out. I was worried for a minute. <laughs> there you go. I forgot you were here. Oh, another gin event. <laughs>